Welcome to episode four of New to Hill Country. Uh, if you're new to the show, uh, our podcast just looks at uh, people within Hill Country, helps us figure out what's going on in the area, how to plug in more, how to get connected. Uh, I'm your host, Michael Hines. I moved here back in October of 2019 with my wife and children. I am the uh, owner of SBG Texas. At SBG Texas, we teach uh, martial arts, yoga, and meditation for both kids and adults. If you want to know more about that, you can check us out at www.sbgtexas.com. Our show sponsor is LMNT. LMNT is an electrolyte mix developed by Elemental Labs with assistance from Rob Wolf. Element is a, an amazing product. I use it every day. It reduces cramping in my muscles when I'm working hard, playing with kids, running around. Um, you know, before I started consuming this product, and I, I, I really do use this every day, um, I used to drink an ungodly amount of water. I would feel all bloated and distended and kind of gross because I was just smashing water, but still thirsty. Started drinking Element, and boom, uh thirst quenched pretty quickly. Uh, it's not like the other electrolyte uh, stuff you find on the market, a bunch of sports drinks parading as, uh, you know, a bunch of like sugary nonsense that's really just parading as a sports drink um, when it's really just full of sugar at the end of the day. Uh, today we're talking to Kyle Kinsley. Kyle Kinsley is a long-term resident of Hill Country, New Braunfels in particular, and he's going to talk to us about living in the area, leaving the area, returning. And he gets we get into talking about uh, his mother's company, which is uh, Green Soap Works. Now, that's green the way that uh, things are, are said in uh, the New Braunfels uh, Hill Country area, G-R-U-E-N-E. -E. Uh, so that can throw off people that are new to the area. Uh, anyways, uh, enjoy the show. Hi, welcome to the show. Um, welcome, welcome back to New to Hill Country, and we're here today talking with Kyle Kinsley. And Kyle's is here to talk to us a little bit about, as with everybody, you know, his time here in, in Hill Country and why he loves it here, and also a little bit about uh, his uh, his mother's uh, soap company, which is uh, Green Soap Works. So, welcome to the show, Kyle. Hi, thanks for having me. Um, Kyle, are you are you from Hill Country originally? Tell us a little bit about where you're from. So I've lived here since 1997, so mm -hmm. 13 or uh, 23 or so years. Uh, mm -hmm. I've been here in the New Braunfels area, Hill Country. Um, mm -hmm. Moved here right after or right in the middle of middle school, and okay. basically I've spent my uh, Almost my whole life here, minus a couple of years I moved away for a job, but we came right back. Okay. Where were you before that? Where did you move from? Uh, we lived in, kind of kind of bounced around. Uh, for the most part, we lived in Corpus Christi uh, for mm -hmm. a little bit. I lived in uh, the Houston area, um, but uh, mainly the Corpus Christi, Cal Allen area. Okay. And then, um, and since you've moved to, do you remember... I mean, is that something you can pretty distinctly remember, moving to Hill Country? Oh, yeah, that was a big mm -hmm. deal. We vacationed here all the time uh, mm -hmm. growing up. Uh, Schluter Bond was our big uh, family vacation every year. And, I see. Uh, my parents had always intended to retire here, and mm -hmm. the opportunity presented itself for my dad to quit his job. The company he was working for was offering mm -hmm. like a, uh, a buyout type deal, and so he really without even consulting my mom just took it and then said hey uh why don't we move to new braunfels and she went, oh, okay well, let's do that i'm 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 reminded of uh did you ever see the old richard pryor movie moving have you ever seen that no no and there's a there's a incredible scene in it richard pryor was a genius and there's an incredible scene where he has to take a job in like idaho and huh. then uh the family's having dinner and they're having like this big argument and he just keeps like mentioning the potatoes like are these idaho potatoes like i <laughs> i bet these are idaho potatoes and like i don't know, I just kind of picture your dad there like just dropping all these like new Braunfels hints like you know, would you want to go to the schlitterbahn and, and <laughs> mom, your mom's like oh, i don't know it's like what if we could go there all the time you know yeah. like 
Yeah, I guess that would be great. It's like it would be, wouldn't it? We're well. Let's make that. (laughs) Let's make let's make your dream a reality, honey. You know, like yeah, yeah. that's uh, that's kind of the way it was described to me, basically. (laughs) And then, how did you guys take it? Were you because you'd already been here? Were you excited at that time, or? Oh, I was I was thrilled. Uh, Yeah, I've got two uh, younger brothers, and they were both Mm -hmm. uh, they were both pretty excited. You know, it was disappointing to uh, to leave, you know, what you're familiar with, all your friends mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. family and stuff. And I'm almost my whole family at the time lived in that area in Corpus Christi. I see. And uh, at, at this point now, I've got very few family that's still in that area. Most everybody's moved up here between Austin and San Antonio. I see. What do you think it is that brings everybody to Hill Country? Uh, it's, it's just a it's a beautiful place to live, um, mm-hmm. uh, specifically in in our family. I mean, people, you know, when I talk to people about moving from Corpus, they're like, "Oh, don't you love the beach?" And uh, while I miss the fishing and the uh, the going to the beach, Corpus beaches aren't exactly like your typical ideal beach destination. The Gulf of Mexico is kind of a uh, in certain spots can can be a little dirty looking. I see. Um, and so, you know, having the rivers and having, you know, mm. access to all the things that, that you have out here, um, mm. barbecue, you name it, you know, it's, it's a, it's a great area to, to live and grow up in. Mm. I grew up in Iowa originally and going to the beach in Iowa means pretty much going to like, uh, some like lake shore or like, uh, there may be a little patch of, of like a river or something like that, where right. there's something that resembles a muddy type of sand. And, uh, yeah, I, I, I can understand. I, I've really been to Corpus Christi, so I don't know what it looks down, looks like down there. I would, I would assume it's a much more closer to a legit sort of, uh, picturesque kind of beach, but but there's beaches and then there's beaches, right? So then right. the beaches all over. So. And the really the thing about this area is you've got the Mississippi River that dumps into the Gulf of Mexico, mm-hmm. and so it kind of swirls. Um, I, I see. I like the analogy, but sort of like a toilet bowl. Um, <laughs> so right there, clo- you know, here Louisiana, mm. uh, down Houston, and then just Corpus Christi, and just a little past that, you, you've got a lot of that kind of muddiness in the water where the water just looks kind of green mm-hmm. um and uh, like a like a dark greenish brown color almost mm-hmm. but then you get down into padre and then over on the you know on the florida coast uh mm-hmm. alabama that area and that water's you know nice and blue it's got that that really mm-hmm. pretty crystal clear ocean sure, water that you see sure. on the on the magazine brochures right we right right that around here sure yeah no i i um I, I was blown away in moving here at like the Comal river and just how clear it is, you know, like it's just, it's, it's, I don't know, it's, it's probably, um, for me, it's one of the highlights of being here is just going swimming in the Comal. Like, and I try to get out there about as much as I can, but, um, yeah. You know, when I got, when I got my driver's license during the summertime, mm-hmm. every single day it was spent on the river. You know, oh, wow. and, uh, whether it was, you know, night tubing and, and, mm-hmm. you know, or just go for a swim in the river and, mm-hmm. you know, don't even bother with the tube. Uh, sure. Yeah. Growing, growing up on that, that was a, that was a big part of my, my, cha- my I, childhood. I can easily imagine that. Yeah. Hmm. Um, so have you ever left Hill Country and, you know. Yeah. In, uh. 2015 mm-hmm. um, I took a job in Denver Colorado mm-hmm. and so um, was uh, looking for kind of a new adventure and we decided mm-hmm. to, to try it out and mm-hmm. moved out there and uh, the cost of living at the time compared to the cost of living here was astronomical I'm and, sure uh, so just overall between you know the state income tax and um uh, you know, all kinds of different things. We just really couldn't afford to live out there. So we spent mm-hmm. about two years out there and uh, decided we were going to move back to Texas. And mm-hmm. um, I really, we thought, you know, for a long time about where we'd like to move. Now we got an opportunity. We can go anywhere. 
we were going to come mm. back to this area? Do we want to move in San Antonio? Do we want to move to mm. Austin or Wimberley or Bastrop or something like that? And we mm. came right back to New Braunfels. That's where, that's where our roots are. Sure. No, I totally understand. It's very nice here. So yeah, I, I mean, I have obviously just moved here and made the choice to move here. So right. I totally empathize with, yeah, you're looking at all these different angles and stuff and, yeah, I don't even yeah. have family in the area, but I just like it here. So, I desperately wanted to get away from I-35, and okay. even that was standing, I couldn't, <laughs> couldn't mm. do it. Uh, sure. So rush hour traffic is still a, a nightmare. That's about the it is the worst yeah. part of this area. Is sure, sure. 35. Sure, sure. Yeah, that's definitely. Yeah, you can. I pretty much always try to find ways to drive around it. I, I don't. Uh, I, I don't want to drive on it unless I have to. Basically. Sure. So. Yeah. Yeah. It's just always a much more pleasant drive off of it. So. Definitely. Um. What uh, what do you feel like is the main feature in this area? What's like? What's if I was just new to the area? What is like the the thing that I need to must do sort of if I moved into this area? Uh, so New Braunfels, that area, or are you talking about just overall hill country in general? Hill country, yeah. hill country in general. Mm. Man, there's so much. Um, mm. The you know this this area probably the biggest thing that would that would probably blow a newcomer away that goes mm. on here that people don't realize is the music. You know, I people see. typically associate. Uh, Nashville with with music or mm-hmm. or even LA or that kind of thing, but uh, mm-hmm. this area and even New Braunfels is is a huge uh, huge music scene, uh, mm-hmm. and you get a lot of artists from from the Austin area, which has also got a huge music scene. And it's not your mm-hmm. typical um, just country music or just mm-hmm. um, uh, a certain genre or anything like that. I mean, all kinds of music comes out of here. And so hmm. you go through, but here between San Antonio and Austin, then there's every kind of music club and venue. And, um, mm-hmm. you know, that's another thing that's been fun is just growing up. And, uh, even as a teenager, you know, being able to go into the bars on, mm-hmm. you know, weeknights during the summertime and they'll do, you know, like a swing dance band at green hall and let you, you know, you don't have to be, 21 to get in you can get in and watch you know two tons of steel uh mm. do a, a a show every tuesday night and you know uh, just anytime you want to go see music uh, mm-hmm. all you got to do is pick a venue and, and see who's playing and go. that's something i really haven't taken advantage of i should i should try to get on that more i mean oh, yeah, obviously we're we're recording this right now during the the COVID shutdown and everything, so it's kind of out of reach at the moment. But oh yeah, yeah. yeah but that'll that should change in a few few yeah, weeks. Yeah, once everything fires up, hmm. I've seen you know uh, Sister Hazel <laughs> at, okay. uh, huh. at uh, the uh, Whitewater, uh, not Whitewater Amphitheater, but uh, River Road Ice House. Huh. Um, uh, you know, and then every Texas country man you can think of. With, and, okay. and we've got a lot of artists that live around here, like Randy Rogers and Wade huh. Bowen and guys like that, that, huh. um, you know, that are big, uh, outside sure. of this area, but make, make this area home. It's just, there's always huh. something cool going on. Huh. Yeah. I haven't, I haven't, I definitely haven't made great use of that yet. So just been... you tend to take it for granted uh, mm-hmm. when you've lived here as long as I have, uh, yeah. you know, and, and, uh, you kind of complain about, man, I just want to go hang out with my friends and, and have a drink or something and not have to worry about a band playing, you know, and huh. there's other people that are just like, oh man, I would love to have that kind of, sure, that kind sure. of music scene around here. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. I, I tend not to be too available at that time. So right. I, I haven't really uh, made great use of it, I think, but sure, I'll, I think we'll get there eventually. It's been a bit of a whirlwind on our end. Just, we just, so recently moved and had to launch the business and everything. So oh, once yeah. things, I'm, I'm hopeful that once things simmer down and uh, then we can kind of enjoy things more and more. But, oh, definitely. Hmm. Um, tell me a little bit about your, your mother and what she does with her, uh, with the green soap works. So my mom's had a, uh, a soap business now for um, going on 10 years. And, okay. uh, it started, um, really my 
dad um, struggled with, uh, he battled uh, leukemia for a while. Uh-huh. Um, and he had, he had it for 15 years or something like that. Okay. And, and so it was one of those long-term things that um, as, it, as he got older, it started to progress a little bit and he started having to get treatment for it. And mm-hmm. so then just your regular bars of soap that you'd buy out of the grocery store, uh, the the different products in it, the unnatural stuff, the chemicals, the, okay. the uh, animal fats, that kind of thing would irritate his his skin and he'd break out. Huh. And uh, hmm. it just really, his skin sensitivity because of his uh, cancer treatments um, uh-huh. caused him to have a hard time with just regular soaps. Huh. And so they spent who knows how much money trying to buy different soaps to to find something that would work for him. And mm-hmm. finally my mom, who's been pretty crafty my whole life, uh, decided, well, you know, how hard could it be to make it? So she hmm. did her research and started making it. And, uh, fascinating. Hmm. Yeah. And, and ended up making soap that he just loved. And, huh. uh, and it, and it worked. It actually helped him with his sensitivities and was, he was able to, uh, to, you know, get clean without having his skin break out, get irritated by, hmm uh by the soap so she uh she turned it into a business and Mm. she uh, at one point um had an account with bucky's uh Mm -hmm. the uh, the gas station here around this area out of houston and Mm -hmm. was in all of their their retail stores Mm -hmm. um and uh so i mean she had she was doing pretty big business with them Uh, Mm -hmm. they decided to transition to more of a corporate type name brand recognition mm. type business. So um, for the time being, uh, her stuff's not in their stores anymore, but we're, uh, we're working on getting her online business and her, uh, her wholesale with other, other places and even Bucky's if that opportunity comes back up. Uh, I see. Getting that fired up again. So. Okay. Hmm. So what does she, but does she have a shop here in town then, or? She makes everything she, um, so my dad passed away, and okay. uh, so she. And took, I would assume that was the the cancer. Is that correct? Correct. The leukemia. Correct. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, okay. It was just, Sorry to hear that. Yeah, and that was that was about a year later, and okay. um, so she took the insurance money that she got from that. Had her had herself a soap shop built in the back because it, uh, prior to that she was mainly a stay at home uh, mom and and, mm-hmm. and wife. So. I see. Uh, she went from having a husband that, you know, could support her to having to support herself. And so mm. she, she did really pretty incredible with what she had to work with. So she built mm. a really nice soap shop in the, in the back, uh, behind her house. And, mm-hmm. um, she goes back there and she makes all of her soap and, um, mm. and so she doesn't have a store. We have an mm. online store, but she doesn't have like a brick and mortar store. I see. Um, but she's got an online store. And so, um, that's something that we're working on getting getting fired up and, and really mm-hmm. getting uh, pushing the online sales because she'd gotten really comfortable with the wholesale part of that. Sure, but, sure. Um, and then when that slowed down, um, just out of necessity, we, we started driving the online stuff. And, and she's seen a really positive uh, mm. uh, increase in, in sales just from that. So that's been nice. Have you spent much time with her making soap and, and watch the process or... I, you know, uh, I've kind of stepped in and out of, of the business with her. Um, what I'm trying to do now is she, she's she's really good at making the soap and, mm-hmm. and not real good at marketing herself. And so I've been trying to step in and help her out with the, uh, the marketing side of it, driving her social media and her mm-hmm. um, email ads and campaigns and stuff like that, and really drive that part for her. And, I mean, she went from doing, you know, $30 in sales in an online business to driving that up, you know, 500%. So uh-huh. in just a few weeks, just from, you know, posting some stuff on, on social media. So it's, sure. it's really helped, helped her business out a lot. Hmm. Um, and I think, you know, I, th- I think with the, the right direction, she'll be able to make this a very, a very successful venture for herself. Hmm. I've used the products myself. I actually probably just used it, uh, Pretty sure I just yeah I used a bar of, of soap from you today actually and it, it smells awesome feels great like definitely has a different feeling like I don't know how to 
boy, my heart, this will tax me to try to think of how to describe things, uh, tactile descriptions of differences between soaps. Um, it feels good. <laughs> I don't <laughs> yeah, know. Yeah. It feels gooder yeah. than uh, other soaps. Like, That's right. It definitely, it, I don't know, it has a really, um, it's really hard to pinpoint the right word here. Um, it kind of has a very soft feeling, I feel, when I'm done. Like, I don't know. That's not entirely clear. Like some some things you take, they kind of have like an oily type feeling. Some feel very kind of like almost like lubricating or something like almost like a greasy sort of residue. But this doesn't have like a greasy residue at all. It feels very uh, kind of soft and um, I don't know. There's a sense of cleanliness to it all. I don't know. I, I again, yeah. yeah. Sorry, I am not a poet, uh, especially not as regards uh, uh, no, it's, skin it's and texture and stuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it, it's uh, which uh, which bar did you did you use? Which one is it? I you had the, the charcoal one. It's the, right. what was the other one again? That was like the other a, one. Like I think I grape brought was grapefruit. Fruit. Yeah, it's grapefruit, yeah, right? Grapefruit. Yeah, that's the smell that I. Yeah. Yeah. So the 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 oils that she used, everything's all natural. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's made through a process called cold processed, mm -hmm. and um, and there's that's something i had to learn with her with this is there's mm -hmm. four or five different ways or more to to make soap and this is just okay. one of them um mm -hmm. but it uh the cold processed soap allows you to kind of form it in different ways so if you ever see bars of show, soap that that have uh, uh like some of them they look like cakes or cupcakes or whatever sure, you can sure. kind of design them color them mm -hmm. really disguise the limit on how you design them um, mm -hmm. but they take about four weeks or so to cure, but she makes everything huh. from natural oils and, and ingredients. The, the okay. dyes are made from, from natural products for the dyes. It's not, you know, your red dye number five or anything. Like sure. That. Sure. Um, so everything in it's essentially good for you. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. That's really cool. Um, and you had talked to me a little bit about some interest in kind of doing some, kind of uh how would we describe this like uh soap products for more specialized kind of uh fields and stuff could, yeah could so you talk I'm, a little bit about that yeah i'm uh in the process of creating it it would be like a sub brand for mm -hmm. green soap works mm -hmm. um same company just a different uh demographic mm -hmm. um but it would be for like a jujitsu uh, players or, or wrestlers mm -hmm. or anybody that gets involved in mats. Um, sure. so tea tree is a, uh, a, a common element in, um, all, all the soaps that she makes. Um, it's also has antibacterial properties. So mm -hmm. if you're somebody like myself who, uh, likes jujitsu, but you got to mm -hmm. worry about, uh, not so much your own cleanliness, but who you're rolling with and whether or not mm -hmm. they're, uh, showering like they should or you know mm -hmm. ringworm and staff and stuff like that that you always put mm -hmm. yourself at risk with anytime you're dealing with with a mat sport um, yep this uh this soap with the tea tree oil um will actually uh, help combat that uh that issue and so it's got antibacterial properties the thing about tea tree though is it smells typically terrible and if you go buy tea tree soap like off of Amazon, mm -hmm. um, it's uh, it's usually a liquid form and it doesn't lather very good. You got to pour like half the bottle huh. into the uh, into the little scrubber to to get it to lather up, so you can mm -hmm. get a good good shower out of it. And and it's really expensive. Mm -hmm. So I talked to her about it, and she was like, "Oh, I've got tea tree uh, tea tree soaps that I that I make." And mm -hmm. um, she also has activated charcoal, which is also another uh, product that has healing properties and it also, um, it helps trap, you know, uh, bacterial particles and that kind of thing and wash them off of your skin. So, um, it's, uh, he, uh activated charcoals, uh, 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 got a lot of, a lot of different uses, but that's just, just a few of them. Mm -hmm. So, uh, we had her make some of that up, started talking to her about the, uh, the possibility of, um, making that into like a sport uh, type brand and, and marketing that towards uh, uh, people who enjoy mat sports or athletics or that kind of thing. And um, we came up with bump and roll soap company. Hmm. And uh, 
So anytime you start a jujitsu roll, you typically slap hands and fist bump. So mm. bump and roll uh, sounded good. I like the, the way it sounds. Sure, sure. It kind yeah. of brings up the camaraderie of, of jujitsu. Sure, sure. And then bump and roll, the initials also make bar. So that worked sure. even better. So sure. uh, bump and roll soap company is what we're working on. I'm hoping to have it uh, go live maybe around Father's Day is the mm. uh, the target at this point um, mm. but we've got our uh, logo set up and our uh, we've got our soaps kind of our our uh, fragrances established we just got to get names for them and all the marketing stuff that you got to figure out with that kind of thing so I'm stepping in to, to help her out with that and I think it's uh, I think it'll be a pretty good sure pretty you good eat success. well you'll you have one location you'll be able to retail at, which is our gym, because we take we take the cleanliness uh, aspect pretty seriously. I uh, I know not all gyms uh, sometimes, uh, and I'm not trying to throw other gyms under the bus, but like uh, you can get a, a certain macho culture, I think, that develops in gyms, uh, which can be very destructive in a couple different directions. Which again. I understand it. I mean, everyone enjoys the allure of being macho, but sure. uh, you get guys that are like, oh, man, it doesn't matter. I'll just, we just roll. I didn't shower. Oh, do I smell bad? Whatever. You know, but then it's, you know, you start getting stuff like ringworm and staff and stuff. And, and it's no joke. Uh, I, when I first started jujitsu, we were training at a university in South Korea and we were just allowed to use the judo mats and i don't know that they were ever cleaned i don't i have no idea if even if they were cleaned it would be nothing like what i do at my own gym it certainly wouldn't be specialized cleaners designed to you know make sure it gets all the bacteria off the surface and also isn't bad for people's skin i i have no idea what kind of cleaning if any they did and i I did get like kind of like ringworm at a certain point and stuff. And, you know, I, it's treatable and all of that, but it, it's, you know, it sucks. <laughs> you're no, like, hey, yeah. what is that? Like, and you kind of like wash it and you're like, that's, uh, and that's kind of one of the, the great fears I have as a gym owner and why I make a, a special effort to keep things clean. And I'll be super happy to have, uh, to retail something specific just to encourage and, uh, ensure that people are armed with, uh, the proper tools to keep themselves clean. And I mean, we actually have mat rules uh, because the gym had just opened up. We haven't had a chance to get that banner up, but one of our mat rules is that, yeah, you you better be clean coming on here. You know, like don't be, don't be running here from like, you know, working in the sewer all day or whatever, you know, you have to be conscientious about everybody else. Absolutely. And, and, you know, if I had just started jujitsu and was out Mm. on the mat, a mm. handful of times and ended up getting staff that'd probably mm. be the last time i got on the mat you know, yeah especially exactly if you, know, if you don't exactly. know better so that could be a huge turnoff from anybody that wow. that Completely. wants to try and enjoy the the sport sure and, you know my attitude is i can't control what the other guy does mm. and and i wouldn't go and support your gym if i thought you weren't clean but i can't control mm. how the mats are clean but i can't control sure. how i clean myself exactly and so yeah. that's that's kind of the motivator for for what we're doing no, I think it's a very cool thing to contribute to a better culture for jujitsu. And that's something that I believe in strongly, which is creating the right culture for everything. I mean, I think, uh, I think unfortunately, a lot of, um, oh boy, I'm going to maybe even put my foot in my mouth here. But, um, you know, there's a lot of talk about jujitsu as Brazilian jujitsu. And, um, and it's it's mostly true that it is a Brazilian thing. It's a it's a Japanese thing that made its way to a Brazilian family known as the Gracies, and they really took it to another level. Um, and I think the reason that it actually gets called Brazilian Jiu Jitsu in a lot of parts of the country is because the Gracies uh, trademarked Gracie Jiu Jitsu, which is what they moved to the states. So then when you had derivation schools off of them, they were sort of like, well, we better call it Brazilian Jiu Jitsu because they couldn't call it Gracie Jiu Jitsu. Well, the other side of that is like Brazilians have a very strong machismo culture and they have unfortunately maybe infected parts of the Jiu Jitsu culture with 
and what what I consider to be negative aspects of that. And I'm not trying to knock Brazil and Brazilians or anything like that. Just every culture has got its good and bad and stuff. And, um, sure. you know, the strength of, of uh, the strength of machismo culture or masculine culture is, you know, you know, bravery and, you know, like toughing things out, holding fast when things get hard. There's nothing wrong with masculine culture. Um, but it has its its own. Everything's got its own downside. And uh, and I think sometimes that downside comes out in cleanliness that people are just sort of like, whatever, you know, they just take a very lax attitude towards it because they have this idea that, like, I'm I'm so tough that it doesn't matter if I'm clean. And it's like, well, staff doesn't really care how tough you are. <laughs> like, no, it's not, not it does not observe. Uh, it does not observe your toughness in any in, and hold it in any kind of regard. If you're dirty, you're no. dirty. So, right, um, that's exactly right. Yeah, I mean, that'd, that'd be cool having you here and just, uh, and that'd be great. It'll make my lobby smell great too, just having it on there oh, to, yeah. to market it in there. So, yeah. just thinking, thinking from a businessman's perspective, when moms bring their kids in and they smell that coming out with as the first thing that hits them when they open the door to my gym. That's that's a great win for us right there versus oh, yeah. like the last thing you want is moms to open the, the door and they're like, oh, they're like holding their <laughs> breath to come in, come into the gym and check right. things out, which honestly, yeah, some of the tr- gyms I've trained in maybe has they have that yeah. effect more or less. So it smells like musty socks. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's not what you want. It's no, not what no. you want. Nobody. I mean, it's like, even if you are a tough guy, like, where would you prefer to be in the place that smells halfway decent or the place that smells rank, you know? I mean, right. it's just, uh, it, just, it goes, it's universal, I think. Cool, cool. Um, well, hey, Kyle, any anything else you want to talk about with, um, where do we, where would I want to, what do I need to do to buy some of your mom's soap? Like, walk me so, through that process. Uh, she's got a website and so it's mm-hmm. green soap works like the mm-hmm. little town in New Braunfels or the, mm-hmm. the dance hall. So G R U E N E mm-hmm. soap works. Uh, mm-hmm. so green soap works dot, dot com is mm-hmm. the website. Uh, she's got a Facebook page, Instagram. Um, mm-hmm. and we're, we're trying to get her, uh, more active on all that. And, and, mm-hmm. uh, so go there. Uh, right now we're actually doing a mother's day sale. I don't know if this will roll out before mother's day, but, Mm-hmm. Um, buy four get one free, uh, and then we're throwing in. She cool. also got some some cool lotion bars uh, mm-hmm. that are uh, little lotion hand lotion bars. Uh, cool, so we're, cool. We're throwing those one of those in as well. Um, but yeah, no, uh, we're, uh, uh, we're we're getting the business fired up for her, and 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 she's doing great, and she's excited about about what's coming, and and so uh, I, I just appreciate you having me on, man. Sure. Yeah. Well, well, thanks for coming on and telling us all about it and, uh, we'll be in touch and, um, yeah, I can't wait for, for the COVID situation to, uh, to, to kind of dissolve and at a reasonable rate and with all safety in mind and we can get things back going at the gym and we'll see you here. So, yeah, all right, sure. well, well, take care, Kyle. Okay. All right, man. Appreciate it. All right. Have a good one. Bye.